Hey, what's going on? This is David Potts with Song Notes, and I'm coming at you with a quick practice tip today. I'm going to talk about the A chord and how you can play this chord with just one finger. I'm talking about your index finger, and I'm talking about barring the second fret. And by playing only the middle four strings, what you can do is play a perfectly legitimate A chord. Um, and this is a sort of different version of the typical A that you probably learned when you first started playing guitar. Now both these A chord finger positions have their place. They each have strengths and each have weaknesses. And while this is the first one you usually learn, this one, although it probably is a little bit difficult to learn because you need a little bit of bar strength to bar some strings, it actually opens up a lot of doors for you. So I'm going to talk about the benefits of playing the chord this way. I'm going to talk about when you should use this chord. And then I'm going to show you about five or six real examples of songs that you could use this chord within and I'm going to show you why it's actually beneficial to have in your toolkit. So that said, let's jump into this lesson. Before I do that, just a quick note, check out my website for all the tabs if you want to play along with the later part of this lesson. PlaySongNotes.com. This is my personal web website. I built it, designed it by hand. It has all my personal notes and videos for the lessons of songs and sort of practice techniques I've created. So check it out, subscribe to this channel, but let's dive right in. So first up, I'm going to talk about um, how to play this chord. Real quick again, you're taking your index finger on the second fret, you're going to play the open A string, and then you're going to play the second fret of the D string, G string, and B string. Only worry about the middle four strings for this, for this lesson, okay? The high E and the low E string, you're not going to play. Now, uh, this does require some barring strength, and that, that gets to one of the benefits of learning this technique, is you are going to sort of get a little bit of practice into the, the bar chord muscle strength you're going to need. That's pushing down with your index finger. This is what you want it to sound like. Okay, uh, try to get that. If you can't get it at first, come back to it. You might need to sort of get your index finger used to pushing down. But, um, so that's how the chord is going to sound. Now, why would you use this chord? Um, a couple of reasons. First, I'll say it can be easier to switch to, especially if you're coming from a chord like a B minor and going to an A. Look how little you're moving there. If I was to do a normal A, it would look like this. This is the normal A transition. And this is the single finger A transition. So my index finger is really staying on the second fret, okay? And that's just one, that's just one example of how this can be an easier thing to transition to. Now, when would you not want to use this chord? Well, if you're playing A and you want that high E string to ring, you're probably going to want to use this standard A formation here. Um, and this standard A formation also, also lets you do stuff on the high E string. Okay, so I was really playing around there with the high E and the B string, okay? If you need to play around with those chords, again, use this standard A position. But if you want to play around with the sort of middle four strings and really the bassier four strings, this new A technique is going to be good because it lets you play notes you couldn't ordinarily play. Okay, again, I'll show you some song context for this stuff in, in just, a, just a minute here. That's sort of how to play the chord. It's why you might need it. Again, it's going to develop bar chord strength, and it's easier to switch to, and it lets you access these notes. But again, don't feel like you always have to use this A chord. It's just, again, one thing to have in your toolkit. But let's get to some of these song demonstrations that use this chord. Okay, so the first one we're going to do, let's just look at some simple strumming examples. So the song we're going to look at here is Jack and Diane by John Mellencamp. Let's focus on the bottom four strings of each chord, which goes like this. Oh yeah, life goes on Long after that thrill of living is gone Oh yeah, life goes on Long after that thrill of living is gone Okay, now you could use a normal A for that, sure. But again, when you're only playing um, with your sing single finger here on barring the A, what you're noticing is the amount of movement required can be pretty, can be a lot less, and that's good, right? Over the course of playing a song, if you're moving your fingers a lot less, you're gonna save yourself a lot of work. You're gonna save your muscles a lot of energy that you would ordinarily be spending, and that can just 
you know, free you up to do other stuff later. So that's one good thing to practice. It's that simple example. Now that song is actually in a different key. Um, I sort of transposed it to D, to the key of D to make it work for this example. But So that's one example. Uh, another one would be all along the watchtower. Okay, so again, I'm going to move this to the key of D. Now in this version, we're going to start on B minor and then go to A and then G and then back to A and B minor, A, G, A. And same deal here, we're only gonna play the bottom four strings of each chord. There must be some kind of way out of here. Set the joker to the thief. Okay, we're just going B minor A to G to A. B minor to A to G to A. Just repeat that the whole time, right? But what I want to note here is if I was to do a regular A, notice how much more my hand would have to move. This jump right here from the B minor to the A, my whole hand is having to go up. And it's not undoable, okay? But the benefit of doing the bar chord A is this. Just look how easy that transition is from B minor to A, from B minor to A. My, my index finger is already there. It's already barring the second fret, okay? And this, again, when you're, when you're playing uh, in the key of D and you have a B minor and you have an A and you have a D, your index finger is usually living on that fret. And it's so nice just to keep it there, okay? So that's one example as well. Um, let's look at some examples that are a bit less strummy and a bit more picky, okay? So one is this just sort of simple boogie-woogie example. This isn't a specific song, but... So starting with your bass A... You can see the tab here. Now what I recommend doing if you're practicing this is keeping your index finger barring that second fret. Now while I am just picking these notes, what you can do is strum the chord if you want. Um, so this is just an example of how these sort of bottom notes freed up so you can be strumming. So it really opens up those possibilities. To show you another example of using those same notes, let's look at the Jack Johnson song Fall Line. So pretty much he's going, this is in key of D, so he's going to be between D, A, and G. But uh, he's starting on D. Because we fell across that fall line, ain't there nothing sacred anymore. Na, 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 na. So what he's doing is he's switching from a D to an A, and he's going. So he's on this D string here, and he's going from the second fret to the fourth fret to the fifth fret to the fourth fret to the second fret, fourth, fifth, fourth, second. And between each of those individual notes, he's strumming the whole chord, so. This one's a bit of a stretch, but it's a good one to practice, and it's really an example of what this chord position can let you do. Okay, you couldn't do that if you're playing a normal A. You would just have to be, I mean, you would need like insane fingers, which I don't think anyone can really do. So um, that's one example. What else do we got? Um, Sturgill Simpson, Turtles All the Way Down, okay? That song is in the key of E, okay? So he has this little riff going on here where he's going. playing a normal E and he hammers on to an E sus4 and he's doing a little picking action there. But then he goes to an A. Again to the A. So again, it's so starting with that root A, what he's doing is on the G string, he's going to the fourth fret. And on the B string, he's going to the third fret.
okay? So the rhythm in that one's a little bit trickier, but still, it's it's example of these two notes you couldn't really do if you were playing this regular A position. Your, your pinky would have to reach too far and do too much. It wouldn't be possible. Um, and then let's see what else is there. So another song that uses this is Sublime, Freeway Time in L.A. County Jail. So you get this little bluesy riff, and it actually starts in E. Um, and that quick little note here, this E that I'm doing, I'm barring the second fret, and I'm only playing the lower three strings. And you'll notice the same principle here is true, where instead of doing a normal E chord, I'm just barring those bottom three strings. Then I move everything toward the floor, one fret, so I'm doing, um, skipping the, the low E string, and I'm playing open A, second, second, on the D string and the G string. Okay, that's another one, where it's a bit of a bluesier, bassline-y riff, but again, it's the same core principle of you're playing an A chord, and you're just playing the bottom three notes, and you're doing that little hammer on on the fourth fret, okay? So that's one more. And then the final one I'll show you is actually, it's Jack and Diane again, the John Mellencamp song. Um, this is the actual key it's in, which is A. So what you're doing here is you're starting with the A, okay? And you're hammering on. You're hammering on to the fourth fret of the D string and the second fret, I'm sorry, the third fret of the B string. And then you're sliding that up. So um, it's kind of uh, mimicking this the tonal voicings of an A and then to a D chord and then to an E chord. Back to a D chord and then an A chord. And that one you have the bass A string ringing the whole time so it's um, it's very sort of loose and approximate, but again, that's a more advanced one where you're sort of doing some slide ups and you're keeping that same bar and you're keeping these same flourish note positions relative to your bar finger. Okay, so that's the last example, but um, again, I hope this was helpful for you. Again, uh, keep this in mind. If you've never learned this before, Try it out. See how you can do with it. Um, if it gives you trouble, just every couple of times you sit down to play the guitar, give it a whirl. Because over time, you will develop the strength. And then you'll find there are certain songs when it's actually easier for you just to switch to this position. And again, it's all about the speed. It's about saving that energy so you can do other stuff when you're playing the songs. And um, yeah, it also is about opening up your other fingers to do cool stuff. And it really just opens a lot of doors for having fun with that guitar, and that's what it's all about. So thank you for watching. Again, check out the website, playsongnotes.com. Subscribe to this channel if you like this video, and uh, let me know in the comments what questions you have, what other practice tips and techniques you might want me to cover, because I'm happy to do so. But otherwise, this has been David Potts with Song Notes. Have a good night, and keep on rocking. Uh, I'm going to talk about the benefits of this chord. I'm going to talk about um, 